Hey everybody, Clay Archer, CEO of DPC Technology. Today I'm super excited to do an unboxing and a review of the brand new UNVR Pro. As you may know, we have the existing UNVR in our office. We're doing a remodel. We're gonna add a bunch of cameras. And so we've upgraded to the UNVR Pro. Uh, what we're gonna do today is get this unboxed. We're gonna put it side by side with the UNVR, show you the difference between the two units. We're gonna fire it up in the rack, log into the software and get it set up. One of the things I really love about Ubiquiti is they get the packaging so right. Their little pull tabs are so satisfying. Oh, that was horrible. It was not that satisfying. All right, so what do we have inside the box? It's pretty typical Ubiquiti fare. We've got the Unify Protect sticker. I'm sure there is a QR code in there to download all this, the good stuff. We have the box of accessories, which we'll go through. And then we have the unit itself. I'm gonna go ahead and lean this down and ungracefully unbox this and have it up for you on the desktop here. All right, as you can see, we have both units together now. I'm gonna really quickly go through what comes in the box with the UNVR Pro. Very typical uh, Ubiquiti stuff. There's a really nice power cable. Uh, there is a box of screws. If you've ever seen the way they present their screws, it's very typical. And there's some two U uh, rack mount ears. There's also the little QR code that you can scan to download the instructions. So I'm gonna set these all aside and we're gonna go through the differences in the two units. Obviously, the, the biggest difference is that the UNVR has four caddies and the UNVR Pro has seven. Um, so obviously that's gonna let you uh, add more drives. Ubiquiti has kind of loosened their restrictions on what drives are available. In the earlier um, versions of this, they had a very small inclusion list of the, the hard drives that you could use. Now they really don't have a ton of restrictions. They list some drives that will not work and it's a very short list. So pretty much any hard drive will fit. Obviously you wanna use drives that are designed for uh, an NVR or a NAS device because there's gonna be a lot of read writes. So uh, I am actually gonna film ours with uh, seven four terabyte drives. Uh, it seems to be the right price and performance for me. I'm not really trying to get a million years of recordings here. I'm really have it more as a test unit and for a practical application in our office. Obviously this one's a one U unit, this one's a two U unit. Also one of the bigger differences is that there is actually a display on the new UNVR Pro. I actually just did the Dream Machine Pro and did a review on it. First time I had a Ubiquiti device with the, the screen and I really like it a lot. Sometimes I'm on the other side of the office and I don't wanna to go to a monitor to try and remote into the unit and you can just see some basic stuff like it's an IP address and the status of the machine. So I'm, I'm interested to test that out on this unit. I find it to be quite a pleasure on the uh, Dream Machine Pro. Also, one of the biggest differences between the two of them is this is a 120 watt power supply and the UNVR Pro is a 200 watt power supply. Obviously a much stronger power supply to power seven hard drives as opposed to the four hard drive. Really where this is gonna make the biggest difference is going to be for the RAID, the newer RAID configurations. We'll obviously dive into it when we get to the software. Additionally, this unit comes with Bluetooth 4.1, um, which is a, a new feature for the UNVR. I don't know how much I'm going to use that, but I'm going to try and fire it up and test it out and see if it makes setup any easier. And finally, and I think this one's pretty important, as you can see that the network interface on the UNVR Pro has moved to the front versus the UNVR uh, where it is on the back. So same connect connectivity on the two. You have a 10 gigabit SPF plus and a gigabit Ethernet interface on both of them. It just has swapped from the front to the back. And I think in most rack mounts, the front is probably more appropriate place to do your connection. So I do like that they've moved that to the front. Um, other things that are similar, same processor, it's the 1.7 gigahertz ARM processor. They're, they haven't changed that at all. Um, and uh, they both have the redundant power supply availability if you have the Unify redundant power supply module. Oh, and one last thing I did forget, and I'm interested to see this, and if it makes a difference in scrubbing or not. UNVR has eight gigabytes of onboard flash memory, and the UNVR Pro has 32 gigabytes. I'm not sure if that's gonna make a difference in not in scrubbing, but I'm excited to test that out. All right, so that brings us to who are these two devices for, and what are the differences between the two devices? As I see it, there's really two main differences, or two use cases, where you would choose the UNVR Pro over the UNVR. Number one is if you have uh, storage needs. So for the UNVR, they say that you're gonna get 30 days for 15 4K cameras, or 30 days for 30 1080p cameras. On the UNVR Pro, they say that you'll get 60 days, up to 60 days, for 20 4K cameras, or 60 1080p cameras. So you can see the capacity is quite a lot larger on the uh, UNVR Pro. The other use case scenario where you might wanna choose the NVR Pro 
is if you need more redundancy or more fault tolerance. So they both offer grade one, five, and now 10, but you'll see that with the Ford Bays, it really doesn't give you a lot of options at 10. And there's one other feature where they have a automatic hot swap drive. So you can have a, a, an additional drive that if one of the drives fails, that it will automatically pop in as your hot swap. So you can see if you were gonna do that, you only have three drives, so you could only do RAID 5 for that in this setup with the UNVR. Whereas the UNVR Pro, you could do RAID 10 with six drives and have the, the seventh drive be a, a failover hot swap. So those are really your use case scenarios. So if you need a lot of fault tolerance, the recordings are super important to you, then obviously the UNVR Pro offers a lot of features along, along those lines. Uh, the UNVR offers those features, but they just don't have as much storage to, to be able to take advantage of them. Also, if you're going to go above 50 cameras, um, I think the UNVR Pro, and I, I, I would assume if you're getting close to 50 cameras, the UNVR Pro is gonna be the one that you're gonna choose. I'm really excited to get the UNVR Pro because what we're planning to do at the new office is test those limits. We're planning on doing a long-term test with multiple cameras um, and seeing where those real limits are at 4, with 4K and 1080p. So with that, we're gonna jump right in real quick and we're gonna take a look at the software. Unify Protect software is gonna be the same for both units. There's not gonna be any real changes there, but we'll go ahead and get this fired up, get its firmware updated, uh, go ahead and set it up and show you what it looks like inside of Unify Protect. All right, so real quickly, I'm gonna throw in a couple of four terabyte uh, Seagate Iron Wolf drives that I have lying around. Ideally, I would be putting bigger hard drives in there right now, but as you may know, there's a little bit of a backlog on uh, storage right now. So I have some bigger drives coming that I'm gonna fill this out with, but they are on back order. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two four terabyte Iron Wolf drives in it. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense to put in this big unit at this point, but allow me to test it, fire it up, do this review, I mean, wait for the bigger drives to come in for the longer term installation. And one other thing, um, the Caddy, uh, the actual sled that you use for the drives, it is the same as the UNVR. So if you have uh, a sled for one, you could use it the other. I don't know if that's ever gonna make a difference for anybody. Just a quick uh, side note that they are identical. Okay, so I've got the two drives in, fired right up, no problems, took maybe a couple minutes to uh, boot. In case you're wondering, the drives are numbered one, two, three on the top, left to right, and then four, five, six, seven on the bottom, left to right. Again, you'll see on the screen it says ready to set up and it's got the little Apple and Android app icon on the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up my phone, hit record on my phone real quick, fire into the Unify Protect app. So you'll see really quickly that it says new device found and it sees the Unify Protect NVR Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and click download Unify Portal app, install. It's using Bluetooth to try and discover the app real quickly. New Unify Protect NVR recorder. Perfect, it's on the network. It's been up for an hour and 59 minutes. I actually had to charge some batteries in the camera. I'm gonna go ahead and click setup here. I'm gonna go yes. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as UNVR Pro for now. Give it an ethernet address. I already have an account. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up as a business account. Obviously this is using the portal to set this up. I'm not sure if you can do set this up without using the portal. I'm just kind of playing along here. Leave everything else as defaults. All right, so now it's updating the firmware automatically. Pretty cool. It's saying it's gonna take about six minutes and 31 seconds. So we'll probably fast forward through this real quick and we'll come back once the firmware is upgraded. It's now saying that there is a new hard drive detected and it's saying that setup is complete. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and go to dashboard on my phone here. And I'm gonna go five stars there. I really do like the setup on these uh, Unify products lately. Doing the Dream Machine Pro really was super easy as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this do its thing. It's connecting to the internet, connecting to it. As you can see here, it's kind of cycling through connected and disconnected. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. At this point, I'm gonna can the app here real quick and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna look for it online. All right, so you can see I logged into the portal uh, unified.ui.com and I'm the dashboard there. I don't know what was going on with the Bluetooth uh, to the, the device itself, but it was kind of saying logged on and logged off, logged on, logged off. At this point it's connected, so I figured it'd just be easier to come in here and do everything from this portal instead. It's just a much more uh, usable interface. And you can see you come in here and it just looks like Protect. Uh, UVR Pro, I'm gonna go ahead and double click on it. And you can see we've got the two hard drives in there. Status is connected, uptime. Everything pretty 
pretty normal here. It's what you would be expected. I haven't put any cameras on this. Storage utilizations at uh, basically four terabytes because it auto selected the way that it was gonna set up the RAID. Very similar to the way the UAV NVR sets up. Nothing different really looking here. I'm gonna go ahead and set up some cameras and stuff, but the Protect's gonna be similar to the same thing you're gonna see in the Dream Machine or in the UNVR. All right, so I've gone back to my dashboard and I'm gonna go ahead and do the UNVR itself, see what's going on in its settings. You can see it's got all its basic dashboard, same thing that the Dream Machine and uh, UNVR have, CPU, CPU load, all that good stuff. Processor, it's got the ARM with four cores, memory, it's got eight gigabytes of memory. It's got the two hard drives they're syncing that, I guess they're doing their, uh, their first setup so you can see the redundancy level. We've got one disc, half discs, hot spares, not turned on. You could go ahead and change that if you wanted to. So one disc is going to be RAID 1 or RAID 5, depending on which level you're there, and half, half a disc is gonna be RAID 10, and you could turn on hot spare. Again, uh, I've only got two drives in it right now, so I'm not gonna test those features, but you could go up to RAID 10, which would be uh, three drives, uh, and then a fourth drive as the hot spare. Um, or you can do RAID 5 with seven drives. Um, you know, that, that's really your options there. So let me click in here and show you how Unify uh, defines that. Your preferred storage policy controls how many disks are excluded from the total storage space to provide data redundancy. One disk is gonna be a single disk, which we'll use for data redundancy. That's either gonna be if you have two, or they're gonna be mirrored in RAID 1, or whatever number that you have, three through seven in RAID 5 with the fifth one being, or the last one being a parity bit, or half disk, which is gonna be RAID 10. So you could do up to six drives there. You would only get half of that storage space. Um, and then you could have the seventh one as the hot spare. So pretty simple setup. It's very similar to the UNVR. Nothing really earth shattering there. Like it, simple, easy, uh, fired right up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and update Protect just the latest versions while we're here. Then I'm gonna come back and I'll show you the interface on the front of it, and then we'll sum it up real quick. Okay, just real quickly, I'm gonna go through the interface on the front of the device. Really kind of nice to be able to do this while you're back in the server closet or whatever, but uh, I'm gonna start off in the top right corner. It's just gonna show you the disks. Of course, I've got a disk in one through three. You can see the disks in one and two. You can click on either one of them and it will give you the information about those disks. You can also scroll through the disks uh, by just going left and right. As always with the Unify uh, controller, just swiping up brings you back to home. I can click on cameras. I don't have any cameras installed right now, but it would just cycle you through the cameras and give you the information on the cameras. I'm gonna go ahead and click in the lower left. It's just gonna give you system information. It's gonna see, show you CPU usage, uh, throughput, uh, your IP address, your uptime, temperature, hardware, MAC address, uh, current vision, version of the firmware, and back to system. I'm gonna swipe up again. And then the last one is just the setup of the uh, display itself. So you can control brightness and you can control the color of it if you want to change it around. Uh, you can click the speed of the fan so I can roll those fans really loud. I'm gonna put them back to auto. That's pretty cool. And then I can shut down restart. This is where you would go to do a real restart of the machine. And that is pretty much it in the middle. It brings you into that kind of a screensaver mode if you walk away from it. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. If you're used to other Unify products that have a screen, uh, you'll be pretty familiar with what's going on here. It is, like I said, it's really nice to be able to walk back to the server closet and get some of that information without having to walk back to a terminal to log into it remotely. So. So that's it real quick. Let's go back and I'll sum up my thoughts about the UNVR Pro. All right, so that's our initial setup of the UNVR Pro. I'm really excited to get this in. Um, I'd love to get some bigger drives installed into it. Obviously, we're having some procurement issues there, um, but have it be our long-term test kind of mule at the office. Really uh, impressed with the build quality of it. Obviously, it's another nice UN Unify device. Um, super quiet, uh, like the interface on the front of it. Um, you know, the Bluetooth, I don't know, that was kind of a little bit gimmicky. I don't know if I needed that for setup. I could have just plugged it in the network and discovered it just like anything else. So um, it was all right, not a big deal. Um, I do like the, the fact that the interfaces, or the network interfaces are on the front of it. I think it might make a little bit cleaner install. Also the expanded capacity, uh, the fault tolerance. Um, it's obviously a step up from the UNVR. Uh, is it worth the price difference? I know, so this is 499 versus 299. 
Uh, and for $200, I think, you know, I think that the UNVR is a really good value at $299, and I think this is a really good value at $499. Um, I don't know, think that it's necessarily for everybody, but if you're gonna test the limits of maybe your 20, 30 cameras or more, I think this probably is a, is a good option for you. Um, one negative at this point is that it's not available. And you know, obviously it's uh, going, getting into summer of 2021 and everybody's got supply chain issues, uh, not only for the hard drives, but for the units themselves. So if you wanted to go buy one right now on Ubiquity site, it's not available. But if it is available at the time you're watching this video, I definitely would pull the trigger on it. Uh, I think it's a really nice device and another great addition to the Unify uh, lineup. So if you are interested in this device though, I've got big plans for it and I have some videos planned for the future. So please uh, subscribe if you wanna see those. Uh, I'm gonna test out the capacity of this and see if we can bog it down and see how it compares to the UNVR. Um, we'll have both of them in the rack, so I'll be able to kind of test them side by side. But if this is kind of the video that you like, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or anything you want us to test uh, in our upcoming uh, long-term test of it, please put it in the comments down below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.